Hey everybody, welcome to Nomads Nation podcast episode three. Today we're doing something a little bit different. It's like a piece of content that I've been wanting to do where, I don't know, we just have a bit of fun and compare a couple of brands and talk with a couple of bag nerds and, you know, maybe pick out our favorite at the end of it. It's going to, it's going to be, it's going to be fun. I'm really excited. Danny's a little nervous, but I couldn't be more excited about that. And speaking of which, Danny, first time having you on the pod. Thank you so much for joining. How you doing today? Doing good. I'm super excited to be here chatting both of you with Aaron and Bo. So it's going to be fun uh, to nerd out, nerd out on a bunch of bags. Got a little preview of some of the questions and there's going to be some hard hitting questions. It's going to be an interesting discussion. <laughs> there is, yes. And you're not as prepared as you think you are because I threw a couple curveballs in there. Okay, I got some surprise questions I'm going to throw in there. So, uh, you know, let's see how this goes. And uh, Mr. Mr. Bo, coming live from Germany, how are you doing today? I'm pretty good. We have a sunny day in Germany after two weeks of rain, snow, and wind, so I'm in a very good mood. Although I'm a little bit tired from a lot of uh, going to the gym this week. <laughs> nice. You're back at Muay Thai? Yes, sir. Killing it, dude. Yes, sir. I'm, uh, I, I'm <laughs> on that note of tired. It's funny because um, we w I wanted Danny Pax on this pod so bad that um, it, we're, we're, we're all spread out. So I'm in Hong Kong, Bo's in Germany. Danny's in the States. Danny, what time is it where you are? It's 9 a.m. 9 a.m. So thank you for being the early riser and starting early. <laughs> Bo, what time is it where you are? It's uh, 3 p.m. 3 p.m. And I'm looking at uh, I'm looking at 10 p.m. over here in Hong Kong. Now, a little warning. Younger Aaron used to be a night owl, but I don't know if you guys are the same way. As I get older, I'm like my, my bedtime is like getting lower and lower, like with each year. So um, uh, it, 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 I'm, I'm not sleepy yet. But if I get sleepy, you guys have full permission to correct me, berate me, correct and berate me. The, the floor is yours. OK, but um, let's go ahead and uh, jump into it. So the goal of this episode, we're just going to have some fun. These are two brands that are obviously both iconic in their own ways. Um, we're just going to go through some categories, pick our favorite bags, and yeah. But we're going to start with some trivia. And Danny, since it's your first time on the pod, I'm going to pass the first question to you, okay? All right. I'm not keeping count. Actually, maybe I should keep score. Yeah, I'm going to keep score, okay? No pressure. All right, so <laughs> question number one. This one's going to you, Danny. Evergood's co-founder and CEO, Jack, was co-founder and head of product at which backpack company, before Evergoods. If I remember correctly, that would be GoRuck, right? Okay, that, that was a layup. All right, I, I started off pretty easy. These questions <laughs> will get progressively harder, but yes. Um, all right, fine. Now, dang, I thought I, I thought I might have had you there. All right, Bo. Question number two, a little bit harder, maybe. Um, Evergoods co-founder and head of product worked on R and D uh, at which backpack brand? Sorry, um, Evergoods co-founder. Kevin, so the other co-founder, worked at R&D, a which backpack brand before Evergoods? Oh, I honestly don't know, and this is just a guess. Was it Patagonia? <laughs> you, can't, you didn't guess that. You knew that. I know. I, I, I was guessing that, actually. <laughs> that, uh, okay. I knew that there was some outdoor brand, but other than that, I was in my mind, okay, I only know two outdoor brands, North Face and Patagonia, but it can't be North Face, so I just guessed Patagonia. All right, you guys are two for two. I should have chosen harder freaking <laughs> questions. All right, Danny, Danny, you're, you're up to bat, all right? Uh-oh. Out of these two companies, one of them started on Kickstarter. Which one was it? Oh, dang. I wasn't aware either of them had started on Kickstarter, but if I had to guess, I, I would say Evergoods just because they're a little newer. I don't know if Kickstarter, how long it's been around. <laughs> Good educated guess. All right, but I got a follow up question on that one. How many campaigns has Evergoods run on Kickstarter? Ooh. Oh man, you you weren't kidding. You're picking up. Mm -hmm. That's difficult. <laughs> mm -hmm. uh, let's see the CPO. I maybe two. That would be. You got it. My God, I <laughs> you guys are good. All right, if we ever do this again, I'm going to come at you guys so much harder with the questions. Multiple all choice right. questions, man. I'm yeah, good. seriously. Um, <laughs> all right, Bo, which brand is bigger? And the way that I'm judging this is by um, traffic, right? So there's a website called Similar Web where you can kind of get an approximate idea of the amount of traffic that goes to different websites. Um, which website out of GoRuck and Evergoods do you think – uh, gets more traffic and therefore is indicated as a larger brand that has more sales. I would also do an educated guess because Gorak has the rocking events. 
I would assume that they have more traffic. Yet again, you nailed it. Um, the actually, fun fact. So based on these on this data, um, they estimate uh, over the past month for GoRuck to have 850,000 visits versus Evergood's 140,000 visits. Wow. So uh, Go, you know, Evergood's obviously a younger company, growing quickly, but GoRuck still a Goliath um, in comparison. Okay, so you guys are crushing me right now, but I'm going to pivot you against each other for the final question. Okay, <laughs> Price is Right style. Currently, there's a GORUCK GR1 Carryology collab with the GRX C2 Samurai 21 liter. All right, this bag is currently on eBay. Don't look it up. Um, it's on eBay with the tags. Okay, still in like the box in the in the plastic cover, basically brand new with tags. We're gonna do prices right. You got to guess how much you think that bag is going for. And Danny, we'll start with you. What's your guess for the price tag? Oh man, I know these get crazy on eBay. I, I've seen a lot of the carryology pricing with the uh, with the reasonable <laughs> pricing. If I had to get, uh, I, it's got to be over a thousand. I, I'd say seventeen hundred because that just sounds right. Seventeen hundred, okay, Bo, you got a guess? I'm I'm honestly don't want to answer that question because the you know the scene where uh, Jack Nicholson and Tom Cruise are. Um, <laughs> in court, and uh, Jack Nicholson tells Tom Cruise, "You can't want the truth. You can't handle the you truth. Can't handle yep. the truth. <laughs> <laughs> I don't. I'm not sure. I wanted to say like something like 500, but Danny's answer scares me. <laughs> that right now. Are people serious? Um, wow. Okay, I wanted to say 700, but now I'm just going to say thousand. Bo, you are the the winner of the Go Ruck Evergoods trivia. It's currently going for nine hundred and seventy five USD. So seventeen hundred. Okay. You know, I wouldn't be surprised, Danny, if some of these collabs end up getting there, right? Because they weren't a thousand dollars a few years ago, right? But uh, for now, yeah. we seem to be peaking at around a thousand USD. So uh, decent trivia session. I've learned that I got to make these questions harder <laughs> next time. I will. Um, but on that note, I mean, you know, we're kind of warmed up, and you know, let's kind of talk about these brands. I, and I, I wanted to talk with you guys about. Evergoods and GORUCK because you guys got experience. And I think a bit more than me um, for some context. So I've, I've been, I've reviewed some Evergoods bags for the past few years now, but I only just reviewed my first GORUCK bag like, like a couple weeks ago. I got the bag a month ago. I've been testing it out and I had two bags, the GR1 uh, 21 liter and the GR1 26 liter. So I'm a bit newer to this sort of GORUCK experience, um, but Evergoods, I've, I've, you know, I've definitely tested a few of their bags, but Bo, what are your thoughts like, on both the brands. Let me start with GORUCK because that's got a special place I know in your heart because that's the first bag that you started with your yes. channel, right? Exactly. Eight years ago. And I actually, this podcast episode inspired me to do a video about the GORUCK GR0 that I own. Mm -hmm. And I finished the video and took a closer look at the bag that I have right here there she is hey. <laughs> fully loaded it up and yeah took uh another look at this bag after eight years and what was the question again how i like it i mean how general I... thoughts just just kind of stream general of consciousness thoughts. i just want to hear you know like you go ruck what's your yeah. relationship like we'll, we'll get we're going to double click into some of this stuff more specifically but just yeah, yeah just what you know what are your first things that come to your head when From, you think go ruck yeah, from a relationship, I would say this is the first bag where I heavily invested into it. It did cost me like 300 just the bag. I ordered field pouch, which back then was also like 50, mm -hmm. 50 USD or something, plus shipping. And I actually looked at the shipping um, yesterday. It was in air quotes, only 37 euros, uh, dollars. Mm -hmm. But back then it was something much higher. Plus custom fees, which is um, calculated based, based on the um, cost of the bag plus shipping. So they actually um, take a percentage of the bag and shipping, which I think is ridiculous that you put custom fees on the shipping costs. But hey, that's Germany for you. Um, so this was a very expensive bag for me. Um, 
And looking at the bag again, I think it was a good investment because it's still holding up quite nicely. And looking at it, I think it is a very timeless design. That being said, it is still military looking, which I personally, the older I got, the less of a fan I have. Yeah, I moved a little bit away from that aesthetic, let's say it that way. Then also I noticed or I remembered that this doesn't have a quick access pouch. Just like you, Aaron, I need my quick access pouch. Only have <laughs> Guilty as charged. Front. Yeah, so yeah, overall I think it's it's a good bag. It's the the packing layout is still one of my favorites. Um, Let me ask though, Bo. Like, how many uh, Go Ruck bags do you have uh, experience with? Is it, just, is it just the zero? Two. Two. Okay. No, two. Uh, I have the GR zero, which is now called GR one twenty one liters. Mm -hmm. So back then we had GR zero, GR one, GR two, and then GR three, which was, in my humble opinion, the best way to kind of describe the bag or name the bags because you clearly knew which. No, which size you have mm -hmm. and now it's kind of oh i have the gr1 yeah which one yeah do you have the 21 or the other one mm -hmm. um so i personally i think it's kind of it was a move backwards to do it that way um and i have the bullet 10 liters i have the three field pouches and i use no i still have them and the old packing cubes Got it. So I definitely say de some Go decent experience with goruck and before i pass the uh the mic to danny i gotta say there's a lot of things oh, sorry go on the Gorok, um, the one with the metallic morale patch, the Gorok Karyology, the very first one mm -hmm. that was made out of Dyneema. The list goes on. That one as well. But yeah. I, I was saying um, there's uh, there's a lot of things, before I pass the mic to Danny on his experience at Gorok, there's a lot of things that I envy about uh, living in Europe, Bo, uh, the culture, the food, but those custom fees that you guys have to pay not one not on the list of things that i envy of uh european living but uh danny uh go ruck what's just kind of like your overall experience with the brand so far all right well go ruck you know gotta gotta give a shout out to bo's review of the gr0 like many of us that got into go ruck i feel like that was an inspirational point where i was like what is that bag because mm -hmm. i i love the uh sort of minimal tactical style um, that was what first really caught my eye about the company. And then, you know, I, I, I would say I'm kind of a fanboy of both of these companies. So you have to cut me off, Aaron, if I start going too, too deep on any topic. Um, but as I, as I learned more about the bag, I really like the backstory of just how it was founded. You know, Jason McCarthy's talking about, oh, I made a go bag for my wife. And I was like, oh, it'd be cool for other people to have go bags. And I, I love that idea. I've always loved the idea of like kind of that, that style of bag and the, oh, go ahead. Sorry. Well, no, I was just going to ask you because you, you I, I, that's why we're so excited to have you on this episode because I know you're a super fan of both these brands. You know, I watch your, every video that you, you publish and like you love these brands. Um, but have you read the book? Because the co-founder Jason, right, he wrote a book, How to Not Start a Backpack Company. Have you read it? Yeah, yeah. I listened to the audio book, which was interesting. Um, it was really cool. It was very, very interesting to just listen to the story. Um, you know, and just all, it, you know, it was just so different from anything I've ever done to hear For the sure. transition from sort of the military life to building this company to, you know, not having a lot of business experience and just making it work, man. It was, it was yeah. awesome driving around the country with, with the dog in a Jeep. And what it is now is just incredible. All right, fine. Uh, there was a quick little trivia question that I was going to include, but I didn't because I thought it was too hard. But I think you're going to knock this out of the park. What's the co-founder's dog's name? Um, it's also a colorway of many go ruck bags. Ooh. Okay. That helps. I think, I think I remember Java. That's it. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> you win. Dude. Um, you're, like, you're, you're like the Michael Jordan of go ruck fricking trivia. Um, <laughs> I don't know. If you, if, Monster? if you chat with JB, he may have me beat. <laughs> that, that's, a good, <laughs> that's a good point. Shout out to JB outside. But um, so, all right. So obviously go ruck fanboy, but back sticking with you, Danny, yeah. what about your, what's your experience been with Evergood so far? Like how, you know, just give us the gist. I mean, kind of, kind of the same thing, you know, they had, there's just something about their aesthetic. So it makes sense that, you know, Jack came from, from Goruck because it brought over that minimal, there's something about that like clean style that always appealed to me. And mm -hmm. so having the CPL when it was first announced, you know, ha looked kind of like a plain GR1 that was a little bit bigger with extra, yeah. just hearts on my eyes, like, mm -hmm. <laughs> 
Um, and, and, you know, I was very excited. I've, I've, I've tried out the original version of the CPL, you know, was awesome to use. Um, and from there, it's just been great to see how they both continue to iterate on their bags without completely losing what makes them great. Like feels like sometimes just to make changes, companies lose the essence of what people love about their bags, but both of them have really just kind of stayed true. Um, and yeah, the CPL is still one of my favorites, but Evergoods has launched some new ones that have really been just taking it to the next level. So excited. Yeah, to I think about that's, the that's a really, it's a really cool point, Danny. Cause like, I do think, like you said, both these brands know who they are. And there's, mm-hmm. there's some br- bag brands that are like this. I think, you know, Bellroy's one. They just know who the hell they are, right? Minimalist, quirky, light, you know, and they stick to that formula. And then you have other bag brands, you know, not to throw them under the bus, but I think like Boundary Supply can be a little lost sometimes. Not lost. Maybe it's intentional, right? Maybe they're doing something, you know, maybe they're killing it. Um, but, you know, there's other bra- bag brands that I think, you know, kind of go back and forth. But Evergoods and GoRuck are two that just, they just know who they are. And um, Evergoods in particular, I think that they launched with a very clear uh, brand idea of who they are. And Bo, I'm curious, like, you know, what is your experience with Evergoods been, you know, you, you've reviewed how many bags or have, how many bags of theirs have you tested? I feel like I reviewed all of them besides the mountain series with that. I only reviewed, I think their very first one. Um, but then I kind of said, it doesn't make that much sense that I review those bags because I'm just not the target demographic. For sure. But other than that, I basically reviewed all of them, even the ones that are not available anymore, like the um, Civic Panel Lota 40 liters, mm. that one that kind of looked like a like a mini fridge on my bag. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> so that was a, a, a funny bag, quite useful, and dare I say, not the prettiest. Um, but yeah, basically I reviewed, I would say all of them. Then I can confidently say that out of the three of us, you two are far and away the go ruck and Evergoods experts. <laughs> um, I, I definitely have, I, I got, I got, you know, a few notches on my belt when it comes to Evergoods, maybe like four, three or four bags. I'd say the PLC, the C, the CPL, uh, the hit pack, um, pa- uh, the cap two cap one, I, I, I've missed out on their mountain series though. Um, or at least the, the, the backpacks. So, you know, I, I, long story short, I'm, I'm in good hands right now with you guys. You guys definitely <laughs> have been around the block when it comes to both of these brands and Bo, if I had to like, you know, I know that both of these brands make great bags and you, you've seen a lot of them, but you know, if you had to pick one bag from go ruck, what would be your favorite? Yeah, probably the GR uh, zero. GR zero. Yeah, I think. Yeah, I think that's the the most versatile of their series. Um, I've never tested the GR two. I've heard from Tom from Pack Hacker a lot of great things about that bag. That being said, I've never met Tom in person, but I believe he is at least one head higher than I am or taller than I am. So the bag doesn't look that out of place with him, with his height. But with me, that bag probably would dwarf me because it's much taller than my back is. For sure. Um, so I believe the GR Zero would be my choice when it comes down to to go. Which, which to clarify, is now the GR One? The yeah, DR1, 21 liters. 21 liters, gotcha. And if you and Danny, if you had to pick one uh, from GoRuck, what's your uh, what's your go-to from GoRuck in terms of a bag? Oh man, it's tough tough to pick just one, man. That's it. But I mean, I, and and as much <laughs> the, as the I pain, love the pain is already yeah. starting. I I, I can uh, feel it. <laughs> but the the GR the GR2 is amazing, but I would go with with the GR1 and I actually have one of my one of my babies here. This is the Heritage Edition. 21 liters. So this is the dark oak wax canvas, which when I look at it, it just makes me smile. It's got the leather accenting. But most importantly, like Bo was saying, these have the quick access pockets, these heritage editions. 
Mm. Oh, that would solve so many problems oh, yeah. that I have with my version. It yeah. looks less less military, has a quick access pouch. Wow. Yeah, so this is, that, I would love to Danny, that's that. kick-ass, dude. So I, I actually didn't buy these my GORUCK bags, but I also have a GR20, uh, GR126 Heritage as well, leather accents. And I really love these mm. because it's so much less tactical. None of the mole. Yeah. All right, how do you pronounce it? Mole attachment points or mole <laughs> attachment points? I never freaking know. I would <laughs> I would say Molly. Molly? I say Molly. I don't know. I always say it with hesitancy. <laughs> uh, Molly, webbing. <laughs> the webbing. <laughs> I, I just love that we can all be vulnerable with each other right now in this podcast. None of us have any idea. <laughs> so, but I have to admit, without the Molly, 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 whatever the hell uh, it is, it gives it a lot less of a tactical look. And it's also mm -hmm. um, on the shoulder straps as well. None of the attachment points yeah. there. So I'm borrowing this from someone in the community. Shout out to Eric for um, letting me use it. Um, I'll be returning it. I want to change my answer again. You said what? Yeah. Well, just, just like on the other episodes, I want to change my answer. <laughs> <laughs> Dude. If, if I could, uh, uh, I would rather take the versions that you have. Oh, oh okay. You both. <laughs> that's yeah. uh, I'll, It makes much more sense. I'll allow that change for sure. Well, that's in line with what you were saying, Bo, you know, and that's what's cool, so interesting about GORUCK is, you know, they have that very tactical military look, but when you see a, an aesthetic like that, it kind of, it's a little refreshing, you know, and it kind of makes it a little bit more accessible to guys like, Maybe me and Bo, I'm not sure about you, Danny, but, you know, I'm not as quite into the military tactical looks. So this is kind of like a great way where it's just more accessible for me. And I'd be much more likely to wear that pack than I would the original. But that's nothing against the build quality or the durability yeah. of the pack, which we'll talk about in just a second. But um, just to clarify, Danny, then your pick was the GR121? 21. 21, yeah, that, that's that's a good – because I the 26 looks like it can hold a lot. The 21 is just the most versatile, deceptive – Awesome size of any bag. It's just so so useful. What? What? May I go ahead, Bo? So may I interject a question or a discussion topic? I just want to say it, and then maybe we can talk about it later. Um, I'm ready. So I just don't forget it. Um, so my discussion topic for later would be: Is Gorok a little bit, in air quotes, boring because it's basically always the same bag? just with different fabrics and a different sizing. I'm just, I'm just want to just no, no, say no, no. it out loud For, and maybe we can talk about it later. No, because Bo, no, no, you've, op you've opened Pandora's it. box. We're, we're, we're doing this now. <laughs> we're, 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 going, we're, okay. we're going into this right now. Bo's coming out hot. So just to clarify, Bo, you said Goruck sucks because all their bags look the same. Is that what you just said? <laughs> <laughs> Clip that. Bo was left in <laughs> <laughs> No, but I know what you're I'm saying. Just... I know what you're saying. I'm just wondering because you are just having this question, hey, which one is your favorite? And I was thinking about that and I thought that's easy because it's basically the same bag and just different sizes. And then suddenly you came around with a, the same bag but with a different fabric. And I thought, oh, that one's better. But still, it's basically the same isn't it <laughs> yeah it's i mean it's really interesting that you mentioned that book because you know we, we've all had our fair share of bags that we've you know reviewed and and brands that we've seen a lot of their catalog right and i think mm -hmm. goruck is is probably the simplest catalog from that sense they got lots of collabs they do and, and you know all these you know smaller bags and stuff but really it comes down to the one two three and is there four grs or is it just three it's gr there's, I mean, that's changed. I mean, they've had the, they have the Echo, the Bullet, the mm -hmm. GR1, GR2, okay. GR3. <laughs> got it. But okay, so we got, we got a lot of variations of what Bo is yeah. saying. It is in essence, though, the same bag. You know, a similar silhouette, similar construction, uh, very similar aesthetic. So you know, Danny, as a, as as Gorux, you know, future employee of of the year. Uh, what, 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 how does that make you feel? That that Bo hates Gorux for uh, for the, I'm, I'm just kidding. Um, but no, to be to be fair, no. the Jordan, mm -hmm. the Jordan or the Air Force One has over many years been the same shoe, but with different colors and maybe with slightly variations. Mm -hmm. But I mean, you, this could also be a positive. You could say they have figured out their design language they're timeless the rolex submariner basically mm -hmm. it will always stay the same but everyone will like it but the question is how do we feel about this i'm gonna i'll take it from there because I, I i like that question bo for me i'm, I'm i 
I just I, I like to let the market speak, and I think that with what with where GoRuck is from where they've been, and just with their cult like following and the growth that we've just seen with you know their website, they're getting almost a million hits a month. Whatever they're doing is working, you know. And I, I agree, yes. it could be cool to see them kind of mix things up a little bit. But there's that you know that classic thing in business: if it ain't broken, don't fix it. And I think that's what GoRuck's doing. I'm sure if a time comes where they start to see sales dip a little bit, they've exhausted the market, the niche wants something you know fresh and coming in hot, um, they might pivot a little bit. But for now, as long as that trajectory is you know doing that, I'm sure they're just going to keep um, keep up with the status quo. But what, what what do you think, Danny? Yeah, I mean, I. I uh, I think that's you know, these are all great points and and like you said when you're thinking about the differences there is a lot of similarities I think that's why like when the M22 came out recently the top loader it was like it like exploded because it was so different from what GoRock had done it was the first one that was like oh this it's classic still but very different but you know for me um, I I appreciate that they've stayed you know kind of consistent with something like you said Bo like the Jordan one I think that's a great analogy of like it works it's classic they've iterated on it I'm not a product designer I can imagine how hard it is to like hold back on adding all the bells and whistles so I've really you know been intrigued by seeing how on how how slow the updates have been I mean it took years for a quick access pocket to come. <laughs> mm-hmm. like a long time. Um, and it's, it can be, you know, maybe frustrating if you're used to the bags that have a lot of those pockets. But I, I, I try to look at it, you know, I'm, I'm a minimalist in spirit, definitely not in practice. I'm a horrible, real minimalist. But I like the idea of it, and I think the backpack speaks to that. <laughs> Guil- guilty as charged there myself. Um, yeah, that was really interesting uh, Yeah, question, Bo. I'm sure we can maybe, you know, kind of bring that up a few more times throughout the conversation because sure. now you kind of got me thinking about, you know, just GoRuck's design language. Ultimately, though, I think it's a, it puts them in a position of power. But, um, you know, we'll, we'll see you know, how long they continue on that trajectory for. But not to, uh, not to ignore Evergoods in this conversation as well um you know if you had a favorite bag from evergoods Bo, oh, which one uh which one would you pick panelota classic 20 liters the plc yeah because it is it is a very very as the name suggests a very classic design that is easily recommendable to many people but still kind of stands out um you can it is very practical from a loading perspective um, and usability perspective, but it is closely followed by the Civic Panel Loader, um, I would say, and their um, the Slingback, not the Mountain Hipback, the smaller one. Mm. Oh, I always forget the name, the two liter one. Um, I don't think I reviewed the the sling, no, the, the the mountain the mountain sling, uh, which is like the, no, the sling. Mountain, the mountain hip pack yeah. is the three point five, oh. and then they have another one. The, oh, I forgot the name. Got it. But yeah. So your 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 hierarchy uh, then, Bo, was uh, was PLC one, CPL two, then the sling and then back. The, no no then the sling back and then the CPL. And then the CPL. Ooh, a third place with the CPL. Danny, what do you think about Bo's uh, Bo's rankings? I think it. I think. I mean, I'm a, I'm a fan of a lot of their bags. It's it'll be funny to to see how different our our rankings are. I think it just speaks to our different styles and preferences. My my favorite uh, Evergoods bag, and I've made the bold claim on my channel a few times that maybe my favorite of all time is the CTB26, which is one of their newer bags. Um, that's what I'm currently using at, for traveling whenever I go places. To me, it uh, checks off the boxes for what I kind of look for in a ideal backpack. I've called on my channel. I have a list of like five or six things that I'm like, it's rare to find a bag that has all of them. This one hits all those boxes along with the aesthetic and some of the other things. And so I just love the versatility to me. It's almost like a souped up CPL 24. Um, yeah. And that's why I really, cause I love the CPL 24. I had some things that I was like, Oh, I wish it just kind of had these things. And then they're like, okay, let's release the CTV 26. And then, I was like, thank you. So thank you for listening. What about Yes, yeah, seriously. Um Dan, so Danny, <laughs> what in particular then made you prefer the C T B over the C P L? Lots lots of letters in this podcast, but yeah, yeah what, uh, what 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 dis- what distinguished it for you? So first up, uh the water bottle pockets, which are always a controversial topic in our wor- in our world. I feel like some people love them, 
Some people hate him. I still prefer to have him, and Evergoods does some of the best. Um, and then I really like that this has a luggage pass-through, which, even though it's a feature that I thought would never matter as much to me, when I travel and I don't have it and I'm taking a suitcase, I just want to kick myself because mm -hmm. I'm like, where do I put my bag? It's fallen. Like, I, I, I regret not having it. And then sure. they also, with the, with the CTV line, they added an additional quick access pocket on the front, which is just incredibly useful. So mm -hmm. those are the three things that the CPL doesn't have that just, once I saw it, I was like, because ah, they released the big CTB 35, like the one bag travel carry on one. And I was like, oh, that's nice, but it's too big. Like, I'm never going to use that for day to day. Mm -hmm. See, the, the 26 is right on the border, but it's, it's usable. So that was my question then, yeah, so Danny, so you're using the, the CTB as an EDC? It's more my all-purpose bag. Like, I'd still use the GR1 sizing a little bit more for my day-to-day, -day, but if I had to pick, like, one bag of the collection mm -hmm. to just have for all purposes, the CTB would be the one I would probably lean towards. Okay, cool. So we got Bo with the PLC and then Danny with the, the CTB. Um Aaron in the HKG is going to pick uh, the, <laughs> the, 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 the CPL <laughs> and uh, TTYL and, and, and BRB. Yeah, it's just, um, it, 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 this, I had a conversation with a friend recently and he hates the way that Evergoods names their bags. And I, I go back and forth on it. What do you guys, Bo, what do you think about like the, the Evergoods acronym sort of naming setup? <laughs> it's, I mean, if you get, dive into it it's somewhat understandable mm -hmm. but it is also confusing at times um especially with the as you have seen just minutes ago with the sling bag i still have no idea i totally forgot what the name is and i don't want to look it up because i want to get to it myself <laughs> but i probably won't remember <laughs> once we finish we, i probably remember then but yeah, it is sometimes the the letters can get jumbled together a little bit, especially yeah. with the the, yes. the PLC and the CPL can kill me sometimes because I'm like, yeah. which yeah. which order do these go in? But um, yeah. but I, I, I do I also like the naming conventions in some ways as well. Can you see it actually spelled out and they're paying tribute to the actual the the build of the bags and you know the, the style of the bags. So I, I I commend them for that as well. Um, I didn't actually answer for GoRuck and I'm gonna answer for Evergoods as well. Where um, I haven't reviewed as many GoRuck bags, but I don't like bigger bags too much, especially heavier bigger bags. So GR ones and easy pick for me the 21 liter and then for evergoods i'm going to take it a little bit in a different route i i the, the the cpl is such an easy pick and so is the plc they're both freaking great bags both with some things that i love and don't love about them but i'm going to just say it, it's still a bag it's it's, it's a pouch that the cap too i mm. am just i am yeah. smitten with it i can't get over it i keep trying to retire it and try new tech pouches and then I just keep bringing it back into the fold. I think it's a freaking masterpiece. Um, and I'm not always yeah. drinking the Evergoods Kool-Aid, um, you know, that a lot of people are. No offense, Danny. But um, it's uh, th this. I'll drink that Cap 2 Kool-Aid all day. It is delicious Kool-Aid. It is refreshing Kool-Aid. It is so good. It's just um, – it's a joy to use. That zip where it yeah. just flops open like that, it's just – I, I can't get enough of it. I, I picked up um, locally here in Hong Kong. We have a backpack um, store called Suburban, which if you guys or anybody who's listening to this podcast ever go to Hong Kong, please go. It is, it is the backpack mecca of the world. All these brands that we're talking <laughs> about are there. Um, and I, 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 they had the Griffin series, the collab with Carryology, and I picked uh, one up for more money than I'm proud to admit. Oh, I got actually – got it right here this is this is this is my boy so it's got that uh, bright orange interior which is a bit too intense sometimes but yeah. i also appreciate it so my pick for favorite ever goods bag is going to be that cap too um but it's funny i did mention that it's a collab and i wasn't sure if we we're going to talk about this but i'm having so much fun let's just freaking do it um you know we got these collabs between Evergoods and go ruck and often mo mo most often carryology right Bo, just like What's your thought on the collab scene right now? This is kind of a departure from the conversation. We'll come back to comparing these two brands. We got we got some questions to ask, but just in general on the on the collabs, I, I kind of want to hear what you guys have to think about this because yet again, bit of a point of contention in the community. Some people are over the moon about it. Some people think it's ruining the niche. Bo, what does Bo think? <sighs> Bo has left the chat. Bo's still thinking <laughs> about the sling. He's thinking of the sling bag name. No, <laughs> I know, right? 
I'm I'm a little bit scared to put a, a huge target on my back, but I'm going to be honest about it. Um, I'm torn. I'm honestly really torn. On one hand, I love how the community has grown and how these collaborations or oh, how much enthusiasm and how much passion the the collaboration items start in the community i love that a lot it's it's very similar as someone much smarter has said before me um backpacks are the new sneakers and it you can see it in the collab bags that being said what i do not like about the collabs is this somewhat um supreme feeling to them i'm not sure if you too probably know it but maybe some of the listeners don't know supreme supreme is this new york brand that makes this you probably seen the brick the red brick with supreme printed on it or the crowbar it's, it's hard to miss red with mm -hmm. supreme. <laughs> it's hard to miss <laughs> you probably have seen seen those and it's just something simple rebranded and made 20 times more expensive than what it actually is worth. Um, and I'm not saying that karyology collaborations are like that, but I am afraid that it moves in a similar direction where collabs are, the collabs are amazing. Don't get me wrong, but I'm sometimes feel we have so many collabs that it is very difficult to kind of innovate and actually make the collapse unique. And I sometimes feel that, for instance, with Gorok, no, was it? Yeah, with Gorok, the collapse, and I'm sorry to say it for me personally, and it's just my subjective perspective, they just are the same. It's, it's just basically the GR1 with different materials and different fabrics sometimes, not always, but sometimes to me it seems that way. And, And it's I love what they're doing, and I highly respect them for doing those stuff. But I would kind of tone down the quantity so you are able to actually make something a little bit more stand out. Because, for instance, the last two Gora collaborations, I personally have difficulties sometimes to pick to kind of pick them apart. I'm not sure which one was first and what are the big differences in those two collaborations. And again, I respect everyone who is involved with those collaborations, but I sometimes feel, hey, why don't you just make one collaboration? But I don't know, use all of the budget that you had for those two and put them into one and then maybe innovate a little bit more instead of in air quotes. I, I'm pretty sure there are more specialty things on them, but I sometimes feel... Yeah, it's not not enough. I, at least from my perspective. Well, I, I totally get what you're saying. You know, a lot of these collabs are just kind of like, hey, same bag, new material, right? Whether it's Ecopack or Dyneema yeah. or whatever, whatever it might be, or whatever goods did with um, the Griffin series with this wax canvas. You know, there maybe were some different construction and sewing techniques that had to be taken into consideration because different fabrics react differently to sewing machines and 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 the way that things are you know sort of put together. But in essence, you know, a lot of these collabs yeah. are just like, hey, same product different material what about you danny state of the union on uh, on, on collabs in general what are your thoughts um yeah i think i think bo hit the nail on the head with just the quantity maybe being a little bit it's it's a lot there's a lot of them um you know among different brands which is awesome i mean in general i like the concept of Uh, of, of the collaboration between two groups and maybe doing something that's a little more special that they wouldn't take a, a risk on with a big run. Um, I think one of my favorite things is the stories, the articles when they come out. I, I would buy a book of all the collab stories. It's so yeah, fascinating. That's a good idea. I think that's that's the more interesting part. Um, but but yeah, in general, and and I think it's cool. Like the CTB twenty six was first the collab, and then I think there was so much interest that Evergoods, or maybe they, they probably already had planned to launch it. But but that was cool because it was a little bit different. So 
it, like Bo said, that was, it, it wasn't just the CPL and a new fabric, which I agree can be a little like, oh, okay, like it's nice. It's an, it's an X pack. It's in, it's in wax canvas, but it's the same bag. So that was different. Um, and some of the mystery ranch ones have been, I mean, they're still like, you can't get a regular mystery ranch bag. That's like the dragon, at least. It, mm-hmm. Yeah, of course. Um, and so in that but aspect, that, one that was amazing. Yeah. Yeah. So I, I love the, the uh, experimentation ground and sort of the testing ground. Um, I don't mind when they release similar versions later on. I know there was recently a little bit of controversy because the GR, the first Go Ruck collab was Dyneema and then they're like never released again. And then they have a Dyneema line now. And I was like, that's awesome because I missed out on the first collab. <laughs> so I get mm-hmm. to try Dyneema. Um, mm-hmm. So, I mean, I, I think it's cool. I can see why it is controversial, why people maybe get a little bit upset, particularly I in general don't like, drop culture as much i get why it's useful and the hype that surrounds it but it is a little bit annoying of like oh my god i gotta be on the computer and at the second i have to click like that i don't like because it forces you to buy something just so that you because it may never be available again yeah i think those are great points danny i think that we're all on the same page here where we're all like we're like for me personally i i'm, I'm down with the collabs i i'd love you know I, I let the market do the talking and you know People like to buy them. People like to buy limited edition yeah. stuff, especially when you're into bags and it's like, yo, this is a li- I, 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 it may, maybe I'm a freaking nerd, but I love that there's only a limited amount of these Griffin caps and, you know, a cap twos and I, and I got one of them. And, you know, it just makes me have a bit more of an intimate relationship, I think, with the products and appreciate it. Um, I, I, but I think we all share the same sentiment where we just don't want it to get to a point where, you know, the carry community is like, you know, the next Supreme, right? And then everything's <laughs> just getting inflated in prices, you know, because like a Supreme collab isn't worth the price that you're paying for it. These collabs, yeah. I think that there's still a good argument made because they're small batch, limited quantity. And, you know, I, I'm making my own backpack and I'm learning all about this. And, you know, if you put an order in for 5,000 backpacks, it's, you know, versus 500, it's just a very different logistical operation, you know, and the yeah. costs are very different too. So as long as it keeps going in the way, in my opinion, that as to where the bag prices as a whole or not, you know, you're not seeing heavy inflation just because of demand. Um, I still think that bag prices across the board are pretty reasonable. I'm not sure what everyone's yes, profit yes. margins are, but you know, yeah. you know, these bags, they're, you know, they're not cheap to make, you know, they're, they're at least 40, 50, 60, $70, you know, for an order of a thousand, you're paying 70 grand, you know, for set, you know, for set, yes, a couple of thousand bags. So, um, I think we're on the same page with that. Um, I, and I, but I do agree with you, Bo. I love to see maybe them just to challenge themselves a bit more with what's happening with these limited editions, not just like, Hey, same bag, new fabric. I, th- I think what Danny said about the mystery ranch is very valid. I would love to see more of those collaborations. Um, so just to kind of emphasize, I think these collaborations are great. I think they are very reasonable, reasonable priced. Um, the quality is amazing. I think for me personally, it's just when it comes down to the topic that we have now at hand, which is GoRock, I feel that there was too much and it, it at a perceived short period of time that it was, at least for me personally, hard to distinguish between those collaborations, especially because it, from a very superficial viewpoint, it just looked like, oh, that's the same bag with a different fabric, mm-hmm. which not, it's not to say that those are bad, but I kind of have wished instead of, I'm, I'm exaggerating a little bit, instead of putting out three collaborations of the gr version maybe just do two or maybe one and then put everything into it that you can and make something that stands out so magnific magnifically <laughs> that would have been amazing and i i believe that they did that in the mis- mr ranch mystery yeah mystery mm-hmm. ranch version um they did that and I, I thought that was amazing. So yeah, I, that's 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 my only only point about the those collaborations. But 
other than that, I think collaborations are amazing. Well, the good news, Bo, is that if you change your mind on the Gora collabs, there's uh, one on eBay for a thousand US dollars that you can pick up. So, uh, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, all right. So on that note, dudes, we're going to run into a couple rapid fire questions. All right. So sure. we got to pick, uh, I'm going to put you guys against the wall and you got to pick a brand that wins. <laughs> Let's talk about comfort from a brand perspective, Evergoods versus Goruck. You got to pick one. And I like this question because although that, you know, I think Goruck has a very consistent strap and back panel structure that they sort of scale out on most of their bags. And I would say Evergood's not quite as consistent, but Evergood's bags have a feel to them, mm -hmm. whether it's the shoulder straps or the way that they, they do their back panels. I definitely think that, you know, when you put an Evergood's bag on, you're like, oh, that's, that feels like an Evergood's bag. Before I say that, though, Danny, as, as the one who's definitely reviewed the most Evergood's packs, would you agree that like when, when, when it's an Evergood's bag on you, it feels like an Evergood's bag or is there's more variation that I'm giving it credit for? No, I, I think that's that's spot on. It's a very unique feeling, you know, with the shoulder contouring and uh, mm -hmm. it, it definitely and their straps are very unique. Uh, I'll say mm -hmm. that. And they are. Uh, they, it, feel, it definitely feels like an Evergoods bag. I would agree with that. OK, well, on that note, Danny, go ruck or Evergoods, which bags are more comfortable in your opinion? You're not <laughs> you're not making you're not making a scientific fact. You just got to pick which harness system, shoulder straps, back panel that you personally prefer between the two brands. Go. Ah, so tough. Although I like the breathability of the new Evergoods backs, I have to say overall, go ruck. I would go with the, especially if, if the Heritage Edition, like you said, mm -hmm. because with the original 1000D, I feel like I'm still breaking in my six-year-old <laughs> straps, like where it's just so rugged that, yeah. Um, but overall, go ruck. I mean, just for weight, for comfort, and I don't know. I've been using it longer, so maybe there's a bias. <laughs> Danny, you, you did well. I know it's hard for you to, to pick one brand over the other, but that, that was a Which really child good do you like better? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> uh, pa passing it over to you, Bo. Evergoods or Go Rup? Which, uh, which bags are more comfortable in your opinion? I think it's hard. For me, hard to answer because my Go Rup bags are so old. Mm. Um, not sure if they have changed anything in their shoulder strap design not necessarily the shoulder strap but more of the connection point mm -hmm. or of the straps to the back um so with that in mind i would give it to evergoods um because for i mean i tested only the new comparatively newer bags than my old gr zero so compared to the gr zero that i own and the bullet that i own i think Evergoods overall is a little bit more comfortable. It's um, but that is based on an eight-year-old back for sure. It's definitely a, a tough decision, and obviously our, our, our picks aren't going to be perfect because you know we have different bags from different eras, and there's always modifications being made. Um, <laughs> I'm going to go with Bo on this one though. While I'm really impressed with Gorox Comfort, like I freaking love it. Like it just feels. Like, it's like you got a tank on your back, but it's not the weight of a tank, but it kind of is the durability of a tank. It just it feels great. And those shoulder straps, they just they're kind of empowering. Like it's like, dude, I'm I'm ready to dude, like nobody fuck with me right now. Cause I, I will I will <laughs> fuck you up, you know? Like there's something like empowering about the go rock feel up. Uh ever good straps. I I love the foam that they use. Uh sometimes the back panels I wish had a bit more ventilation in them. Um for my personal uh in my personal experience but yeah i'm gonna give the uh i'm gonna give the nod to evergoods there so that's uh that's that's a go ruck for danny and two evergoods for bo and myself moving on to the next question bo we'll start with you and again we're not bag scientists here just based on our experience um which bag which brand do you think makes uh more durable bags like which one if you had to get one bag from one of these brands the rest of your life to last as long as humanly possible which brand would you trust more? Oh, if it's, I mean, I'm not putting them to the test like all of the ruckers that are throwing in all of the stuff into mud and carry like I don't know. Yeah, for, yeah, for clarification, none of us are JB like like tr like like dragging the bags behind our truck. You know, uh, he, he's he, he's the real uh, the voice that we should be asking right now. But uh, you know, just based on our limited experience, what do you think, Bo? Honestly, I would say it's the draw. Yeah, I, I believe they are both so very well made. Um, I would totally say both hold up a lifetime. That being said, I feel that the, for instance, the fabric on my Panelola Classic will keep its um, color 
much longer than my GL zero. My GL zero hasn't this has no discoloration at all. Mm -hmm. But if I would, if I would, I would assume that if I would put both bags in the sun for two years, I would assume the the Evergoods would keep its color longer. I would assume. But that's just an assumption, of course. No, no scientific fact. Interesting. No. Yeah, yeah. For clarification, uh, yeah, asterisk. We are not scientists. <laughs> we, we <don't, laughs> we're just. Hold on, Aaron. You're not. No. Yeah. Yeah. Spoiler alert. Sorry, guys. But um, yeah. So I think uh, I'm going to jump ahead of you here, Danny, and, and I'm giving you permission. I don't like ties, but honestly, I'm just going to say both these brands make the just some of the most durable bags on the market. So I will allow. But Bo inspired me to. I wanted to pick one, but I actually can't because <laughs> like, I mean, you know, the, the, the GORUX marketing is the whole bomb proof angle and, and all that and military grade. And it's, it, it definitely holds up to that. I mean, these things, the, the, the reinforcement in the stitching that you have, like whether it's in these shoulder straps or the top handle, I mean, it's just, it's something else. Um, but I, I, I don't think that an ever goods bag is ever going to fall apart on you. So uh, I, I, I'm going to take a tie as well. Danny, you're allowed to as well. Or if you want to, you know, get weird with it, you can, you can take one over the other. Yeah. I mean, I, I would say that under normal, you know, use, I agree with you guys. It's a tie. Like there's nothing either. of the, I don't think either of these would, would fail. I will say though, that as I've started to get more into rucking, I still don't know if I'd be comfortable rucking with my Evergoods bags. Like I, I don't think it would tear, but I just have a little more peace of mind that like the go ruck, build quality might hold up better and that's where you're just carrying metal plates into these environments so i i might give a slight edge to go rock just in that regard because it, it was just designed for that type of a use case um, i love it i know people rock with the cpl but i'll give a little edge to go rock just to just to make it exciting here <laughs> <laughs> I love it. That I, I, I'm, I'm thrilled. I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled. Um, all right, cool. So we got um, Danny with two two votes for GORUCK. Bo and I tied on that last one. The Evergoods we picked for the previous one. We're going to do one more rapid fire. Um, totally opinion based. You know, there, there's no there's no right answer here. Um, but just from an aesthetic perspective, which brand do you prefer, Danny? Uh, that's so. <laughs> that's really hard. Uh, Danny has left the chair. Yeah, Danny is gone. <laughs> <laughs> um, I don't know. I really love the aesthetic of both. I mean, I think I couldn't even pick which of my favorite GORUCK bags because, I mean, between the tactical side, some days I'm like, man, I'm feeling more adventurous, more I got to survive the zombie apocalypse. And some days I'm feeling more I want to be Indiana Jones and get a heritage style uh, that was bag. Well said. <laughs> and then. Yeah, I mean, so I, I think it's tough for me because GORUCK's like that first love, right? So, like, I saw it before the CPL. I built a – I imprinted with, with the GR1 silhouette. And there's still something about it that uh, – the shape of it, I like a little bit more than some of the boxier CPL shape, um, which I still love. But I, I would give a slight edge to GORUCK, particularly with, like, the heritage additions that just look so darn good. <laughs> I'm with you there, Bo. All right, so that, that's uh, that's Danny on uh, phone for Go Rock. Bo, which aesthetic do you prefer? Um, Evergoods, because just because, I, as I mentioned before, the older I got, the less or well, the more I moved away from the military aesthetic. Um, so yeah, I prefer the Evergoods aesthetic because it, it is much more approachable and it's not, it doesn't draw too much attention if you're, for instance, in an office environment. Sometimes I feel, or back then I felt a little bit out of place with the Gorok back in an office, especially if you have like, like a client approval meeting where everyone is meeting up to discuss something very important and then the Gorok bag is sitting in there in the corner and uh, someone is kind of like, who's going to war? Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> so it's uh, so I would rather lean towards uh, Evergoods. But I do feel that especially once, um, if I remember all of the comments on my videos back then, that that is a very Euro European-based opinion. I feel that many Americans are 
much more welcoming to this military look and wouldn't mind this kind of look in an office, at least based on the comments that I sometimes got in my videos that are saying, what do you worry about the military look? I, I rock my Rush 24 every day <laughs> in your office together with my suit. So I feel that is a little bit of a European opinion and not something that is reflected in the U.S. market. Yeah, yeah, Americans. Yeah, it's, it's definitely uh, it's definitely more of an American thing, I think. And I, I think, though, on that note, it's growing the tactical military vibe. It's it's getting to be more of an international thing. You know, you probably might be seeing that pop up a bit more in Germany. Um, we're seeing it more and more in Hong Kong now. Not 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 a lot though. Like not as much as I would I, I would assume so um, in America. But for me, I'm gonna I'm, I'm gonna give the edge to Evergoods. Um, Corex aesthetic for being tactical is incredible. And they just found a way to sexify this look in a way that mm -hmm. other brands haven't been able to do that I've seen. You know, the silhouettes are just gorgeous. Uh, them going with no water bottle holders, very controversial. But I think that adds the aesthetic and kind of makes it more accessible for those, you know, people want to bring it into the office or a more professional setting uh, because it just looks cleaner that way. And especially these heritage bags. I mean, you know, you take off the whatever the hell they're pronounced, Molly attachment points. Um, then now, now, now you got a bag that kind of works, right? A bit more, uh, it's a bit more versatile in that sense, but there's something about whatever goods is done um, that I just love that crossover look that they've, that they've yeah. sort of trademarked in some ways. I mean, other bags do crossover aesthetic, but they, it's just kind of their thing. They've been on that since day one. Yet again, me talking about brands that know who they are. And it is a bag that, like a lot of their bags do look good in the office, maybe not the mountain series as much, but like, you know, if you take the, the Cidic panel loader, um, for instance, you know, it's, it, it, it works outdoors and indoors in a way that's, it's very difficult to execute, I think. And, you know, a lot of outdoor bags look like outdoor bags. And a lot of urban bags look urban. And they really find this really interesting way to sort of weave these aesthetics together in a way that I, I think that definitely deserves uh, some applaud. Like I said, I'm not always drinking the Evergoods Kool-Aid in the way that everybody else is. But, you know, I, that's one thing that I have to tip my hat to with them. Would you agree with that, Danny? Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, that's why I was, it's tough to pick. I love the Evergoods look. I agree the the crossover aspect has been done well. Um, so I'm a big fan of the of both aesthetics. I drink the Kool Aid. I have a little one of those yeah. beer dispenser hats with both of them. Just <laughs> <laughs> should we should we do it? Should we do an Evergoods Kool Aid keg stand for you? Bo and I will hold uh, one leg each. <laughs> I'm down. <laughs> All right, guys. I got two more questions. Um, Bo. Yes. What, 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 one quick answer. Favorite bag overall between the two brands? If you had to just take one bag, which one would it be? I'm kind of, I'm honestly a little bit jealous. I just went to the website of Gorok and I might need to consider buying the Heritage version because it is actually exactly solves all of the issues that I have with my GR0 that I just took a look at and filmed a video about. Um, but without that bag in my hands, I would, yeah, probably still go with a panel loader classic 20 liters from Evergoods. That would be, I think, overall the best bag of both portfolios, I would say. Great pick. And real fast to the listeners, uh, Bo, myself, and Roland K. Smith from Rush Faster, we did a podcast episode where we dissected that bag for like an hour. Um, so if you're interested yeah. in learning more about our thoughts on the PLC, our, our very deep, intensive one-hour thoughts on it, uh, I'll, I'll link to it in the description below. Danny, one bag from either brand, which do you pick? I know I've been all go ruck this whole time, and I love it. It's tough, but if I had to pick just one of any of them, the CTB26 would still be just like it just, it has some of those extra things that I don't always use them, but when I need them, I'm really happy I have them. <laughs> 100%. Um, I, I think I'm going to take the Evergood Civic Panel uh, Civic Panel Loader. So many bags to choose from, so many amazing options, but I guess it's just for that concept of having one bag that can do so many things. The Civic Panel Loader is just, you know, I, I wouldn't mind taking it on a hike. It looks good in the office. I love the quick access of it. It's a little bit bigger for what I prefer in an everyday carry. I like to usually go around 19 to 21 liter range, but um, just that versatility of that bag. It's uh, There's not a lot of bags that can do 
everything that that bag can do. And then, you know, it kind of leads us up then to the final question. You know, if you, if you got to pick Danny, which, which, which kid do you, do you like more? You, you got to pick one, which, 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 uh, which, which brand, which brand wins the battle of the brands for you between Evergoods and go Ruck? Oh God, <laughs> that's so horrible. I know. Can we go with the sorry, draw for this sorry. one? <laughs> no, we absolutely cannot. <laughs> I gave you your chance uh, for a draw earlier. Uh, it's the answer is a draw, but I mean, <laughs> it, it, you know, it's tough, I guess. Yeah, it, it would be very, I could go back and forth. I could be, di- you know, persuaded to go either direction. I like that both of the product lines on on each side are growing. So I'm trying to evaluate also from like the, the pouches, which we didn't talk as much about, but I have a lot of thoughts on both Go Ruck and Evergoods pouches. I love them both. We'll do a part um, two later. Just just, just Go Ruck and yeah. Evergoods pouches. We're going real yeah. niche here. Two hour yeah, conversation. Yeah. <laughs> and the apparel. So, I mean, even though I, I love Evergoods' singular bag, I think there's still something about just the uh, simplicity of a lot of Go Ruck's approach to their design that I would give them a slight edge. I'd given them the edge on the durability. And so that, that piece, um, you know, and I think if you like Go Ruck's bags, even though Evergoods is awesome, that's, that's probably what you should go with. For most other people, I would say Evergoods would probably be the, <laughs> the direction. <laughs> But so, yeah, that's a good distinction that, yeah. you know, you might make a recommendation to somebody who's looking, to, you know, to get their first bag, maybe check out Evergood just because of that crossover appeal, a little bit more accessible. But for you personally, you just, you know, it's the first love, you, you know, the, 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 yeah. the first love always got a special place huh. in the heart. For me, uh, I, I'd pick Evergoods. It, Go Ruck is just a, a Goliath of a brand, and I, I, I love what they do. Just for me personally, I, I like something with a little bit more of an urban aesthetic, um, so it's an easy pick for me. But that's just there's no shade being thrown at Go Ruck at all. Yeah. It's uh, it's like it's 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 a hard choice for sure. Um, and kind of with that, I think that kind of wraps it up. Any uh, any any what about closing Bo? thoughts? We got to get Bo's uh, yeah. answer. Oh, wait, no, we got to. He's, he's got to answer I, the tough one. <laughs> He's not Bo? getting out of oh, this. Sorry. Oh, he's, he's like, oh. <laughs> I, sorry, Bo. Yes. Yes, you forgot me. Bobby, Bobby, Bo, you're not getting out that easy, my dude. Which brand wins? I would go with Evergoods. Just because um, I think both brands are great, but I do feel that Evergoods is much easier to re- recommend to a broader target demographic but also to it is much broader in terms of usability um also their portfolio is just much bigger i mean also the the pouches are great the cap too my favorite tech pouch overall so just based on on those uh features um and aspects i think evergoods is better but GoRock has been my first love. Um, I still think they're a great company. They have a great bag. And I just, I'm, I'm looking at GR2 Heritage Edition, which I am very much considering to buy, but 545 USD plus, I don't know how much shipping would be. And uh, yeah, probably not going to be anywhere soon that I will actually purchase that bag. Um, yeah, so 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 go Ruck, go Ruck, If you're watching this, please please send Boa back. <laughs> <laughs> but that is also something why it would be very difficult for me to recommend go Ruck mm. to mm-hmm. anyone else yeah. besides people who live in USA. Evergoods is available at, for instance, Mukama in mm. in Europe um, or at Chaos, if I'm c- remembering correctly. So that alone makes it for me as a European much easier to recommend Evergoods. And Gorak is yeah nowhere near easily to get in in Europe, for sure. Fortunately, yeah. Yet again, uh, it's those, those custom fees. They are uh, they definitely Crazy. make it challenging. I'm hoping you know because one of the most comments I get all the time is from international buyers. You know, looking for these bags, and uh, you know they're just it's it's a struggle. It's you know the uh, you know, yeah. some brands like uh, like Tortuga they only ship to the states and like hey we'll we'll help you out with a a shipping forwarder or whatever and it's like you know it, it's a nice gesture but it doesn't make it cheaper really help out at all so um and i know that's a, that's that's a challenge with brands just in terms of scaling in terms of logistics in terms of inventory so it's not that the brands don't want to offer these bags at an affordable price in europe it's just yeah. that you know it's 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 difficult i mean you're even seeing uh 
but you're starting to see it's getting better. Like brands like Bellroy, I'm sorry, not Bellroy, um, Air now, they have a location in London. Um, so they're trying to get bags much cheaper to the UK. They might be doing that in Europe as well. So hopefully as time goes on and these brands can scale up a bit more, uh, our, our friends in Europe can have an easier and cheaper time, uh, you know, getting the, the, the bag that they're looking to grab. So real fast, I, I just wanted to chat real fast because we didn't give actually a lot of like chatting time about the cap too. And Bo, I just want to clarify, did you say it is your favorite tech pouch? Yes. Okay. So that, that's, that's, that's two out of the three. Danny, what, what are your thoughts on the, on tech pouches and where does the cap two sort of stick in that in terms of your rankings? It's high. I mean, I, I have my, my cap two here as well. So, you know, I'm, I'm drinking the Kool-Aid mm-hmm. right there with you guys. The self standing mm-hmm. design is unlike anything on the market. It's the best. It's, it's so good. It is a little bit bulky for what I typically like to carry for pouches. So the one that I, you know, just to, just to keep it go ruck consistent, the wire <laughs> dot from go ruck. There you, you go. Know, this flat pouch is, is so tough. So if I'm traveling like minimal one bag travel, this is still the style, but day to day cap two. <laughs> I haven't tested out any of the GoRuck pouches. They do look pretty sweet, and I do agree with the cap two. That bulk would be, if I had a list of negatives, that would probably be at the the top. It, it's a little bit heavier, definitely on the bulkier side. Um, but for me, the pros definitely outweigh the cons. Uh, and I wouldn't say it's the only one like this though. They're starting to catch on. The other the other yeah. um, bag companies. You got um, Bellroy's got their desk caddy. Have either of you guys tested that one yet? Not yet. Yeah, it's, that it's, one. It's, it's, it's a flimsier yeah. take on it. It doesn't stand quite as well, and you, it requires a fold to kind of open it. Mm-hmm. But um, the form is a little bit different in that sense. It's where it's significantly lighter and less bulkier. And then you also have mm-hmm. the Alpaca Vertex pouch, which was on Kickstarter. It should be launching on their website. And it's getting a lot of flack for basically like ripping off um, the Evergoods Cap 2. Mm-hmm. And the similarities are... You know, I can see where somebody would say that. Um, it's definitely bigger, though. Like, my big-ass headphones can fit in the Alpaca Vertex pouch as opposed to the Cap 2. There's no way that's happening. And the Vertex pouch actually has magnets that allow you to open it, and then it stays connected with, which oh. is a, a nice little feature um, that I quite liked. And it's a little bit di- of a different setup in between, but I do have – I love these tech pouches that can also double as desk caddies. They're just, they're just sick. You just yeah. pop on the table, stands up. Um, so maybe uh, – Maybe one day we'll uh, we'll line up a, a tech pouch conversation. You guys, yeah, in? yeah, a hundred percent. Tech pouches are so difficult. I would just want to uh, interject Please. about Bellroy uh, pouches. I think the Bellroy pouches are amazing, but they just like, and that's not isolated to Bellroy. But I feel many tech pouches cater specifically towards Apple users, mm. so. The magic mouse, in my humble opinion, the worst mouse that you mouse that you can ever buy. I love this thing. Charging, charging, I, 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 love, I love my magic Apple. mouse. It's magical. Yes, yeah. it always gets it's the Android magic. Apple. Let's go. Now we're not. <laughs> <laughs> but you can't tell you can't tell me that your hand doesn't cramp up after eight hours of working on it. It did. It is. Uh, but it, it's, I think, I, I think, I think it's given me Stockholm syndrome as to where now it doesn't. And maybe it does, <laughs> but I just don't think about it, but it's Stockholm, the, the, the crap it's out of me. Just, and um, no, I, I get what you're saying. Ergonomically, it's not being stuck in the claw. is not <laughs> great for your breath. It's not good. I still love this guy. And maybe, maybe it's also, I mean, I'm over 40. So it's it's for me it's different maybe maybe that's the thing but I would never use the magic. Bo, mouse. shut the front door. Magic. How old are you? Forty two. What? I had yeah, no I would, idea. I would never have guessed. <laughs> never, never would have guessed. Dude, you put a gun to my head. I'm saying like 33, 34. You look great <laughs> no. for your age. All right, we're transitioning now. Now, now we're talking about Bo's secrets to eternal youth. What? <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs> it's uh, good genetics, bro. I need to ride a motorcycle and do Muay Thai. I'm, exactly. That, that <laughs> that's the formula right Three there. Three of water each day. Yeah. <laughs> it's also helpful. Hydration. Okay, we've got the secrets motorbike yeah. muay thai and hydration <laughs> <laughs> i'm getting a motorbike tomorrow i mean <laughs> yeah you should you definitely should 
it's a be- it was the best decision when I was uh, 36 that I could ever have made. What, is to get your motorcycle license or the motorcycle? Yeah. Yeah. It's so much fun, both. I, uh, so I motorbike a lot. I'll, I'll be in Vietnam in a couple of days, and I always get a bike when I'm there. And I'm doing a, a 10-day motorbiking trip with two of my high school buddies uh, through, Thai- oh, through the north of Thailand uh, in February. So I, uh, I don't have a license, but uh, you don't need one in Thailand and Vietnam. But I've got a lot of experience. I did, I did a, I did a two-week I did a two week motorbiking trip through the north of Vietnam with one of my buddies uh, as well a few years back. So I've gotten some experience on the motorbike, um, Bo, but my, uh, my media manager at Nomads Nation, Margaret, she just got her motorcycle license. She's telling me every day, Aaron, you're getting yours, you're getting yours, we got to ride together. So you're telling me it's the, you know, the, the, the secret to your youth. She's hounding me every day for it. Danny, we're getting our motorcycle licenses Let's and the three it. of us, we're going on a boy's trip. I'm down. I'm down. And Aaron, yeah, sounds good. I'm, yep. I'm curious, what bag are you taking to Vietnam? <laughs> exactly. Uh, it's, exactly. Um, I actually last time I did it, I, I brought the um, the Manal uh, Carry On 3.0. I love that for its sleek, streamlined um, build, and also it, it works really well in the outdoors and the indoors. You can pop it on the back of a motorcycle. It's really well put together for that. So that's what I did last time. I don't know what I'm going to do this time. Uh, I might. Uh, yeah, plug my own backpack here. I might take my own bag, the Fyro bag, hey, to test it out on the go. road and really see how well it does on a motorcycle. But um, we'll see what happens uh, in regards to one that. One bag travel, or will you? For the motorcycle trip, last time I did one bag. I did the uh, I did the Manal. I strapped it to the back uh, of a of a motorbike, and um, yeah, that, it was just just one bag for the entire trip. So yeah, keep it light, dude. I don't want you don't want too heavy a bag on the back. You don't want it to sort of make you know make the bag uh, make the bike um, not feel very balanced. So yeah, uh, one bag travel on the back of a motorbike. I'm looking forward to it. Cool. All right, dudes. Listen, I appreciate you guys' time so much. To anybody who's still here, thank you so much for listening. If you're looking for any more information on any of the bags that we talked about, I'm going to link to any of Bo's reviews that he's done about GoRuck Evergood. Same thing with Danny Pax. And if you're going to ever make a purchase, we'll have a couple of affiliate links down there. If you ever make a purchase through there, it does help to support the site so we can keep making um, awesome podcast episodes like this. Bo, thank you so much for your time. Danny, thank you so much for your time. And uh, we'll uh, be doing this again real soon. Awesome. Thanks so much. Great to see you guys. Thanks, guys. Bye. Bye Bye-bye.